what's going on people and welcome back to another tutorial my name is josh and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different to what we usually do on this channel where i kind of do a step-by-step -step mix tutorial more so we're going to go back and revisit a song that i've mixed previously and i'm going to show you the process and all of the plugins that i used the chain that i used just to give you a better idea of how i achieved the, the finished product um, the song is called Buss It. It's by S Loud. It's out on Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, the lot. Um, so, yeah, let's get into this. I got dip, upside to get the chip. Got my little package to flip. No way I'm going legit. Young boy said he won't get rich. Had to bring him in like a guest list. On the scales, weighing up a dish. On the phone, got him waiting for a flip. With the sauce I create, I can't fall off the way. Okay, cool. So that's how the song sounds like. That's pre-master, by the way. That's just the mix. Um, and when I got the stems in from S Loud, first thing I thought was, wow, this guy's voice is like, I've never worked with someone with this type of voice before. <laughs> um, he's got a very unique voice. I don't think there's anyone else really in the UK music scene that sounds like him. Um, but also I felt like the way that he performs, the way that he sings is quite similar to the way the fu that Future performs, rap sings, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm not saying that their music sounds the same, but it was it's, they've got a very similar voice. So I'm not ashamed to admit, um, I went out and looked up kind of Future to see who mixes Future's music. And um, I found a really good article in Sound on Sound by... Future's previous engineer called, um, i written his name down, Seth Firkins, who unfortunately has passed away now, and kind of just drew some inspiration from what he was saying in that article. So there are a lot of techniques that I've used in here that are directly from that article. So let me show you from the top what I have done here. So. I got dip, upside to get the chip. Got my little package to flip. No way I'm going legit. Young boy said he won't get rid. All right, cool. So, first thing I started off with is a compressor. Um, I'm using a Tube Tech compressor. What are we doing on this? We are. I got dip. Upside to get the chip. Got my little package to flip. So we're doing minus three decibels on here. Uh, we've got a relatively fast attack on three and a, a kind of slow release at five and a four to one ratio. Uh, next, we have our auto-tune. Auto I got dip, upside to get the chip. Got my little package to flip. No so we're doing pretty much the, the lowest speed and the lowest note transition. So really, really doing an extreme setting on the auto-tune. Um, and next up is something that I don't usually do on my mixes. And if you've watched my previous videos, you'll know that I never usually put delays and reverbs on my channel but on this particular mix i did both and that was directly from the article i read by seth um where he said he puts delay on the channel and he puts re reverb so i kind of just wanted to see what it would sound like um i've absolutely fucked this as well i've been playing it with this I got dip. all right cool so that was so basically the vocals are going through this channel that has more plugins on but we'll get to that in a sec so yeah uh the repeater which is a delay it's similar to the h delay from waves in terms of you can really really customize it which i like i can't remember if i used a preset on this particular um track it doesn't look like it but we're doing a one eighth delay we've got a bit of a high pass filter going on we've got a bit of a low pass filter going on and we've got a really low mix i think that's at about Let's see, it's about two percent. I got dip, upside to get the chip. Got my little package to flip. No way, I'm going legit. So that just makes it sound wide, right? It's got a spread on there, as you can see. I've got the spread set to eight a. Um, really subtle, really cool way to 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 use the lakes. It's almost like a reverb. Um, I like it. I like it a lot. Um, next, we use the virtual tape machine. There are tons of these out there. There's a waves version, and I literally usually just throw it on my vocals. I don't usually um, mess around with the settings at all. I just make sure it's not too loud, and you know it really brings your vocals out, makes it sound big in your face. 
I like it. Um, EQ, I'm scared to open this EQ. <laughs> All right, as you can see, I've done a madness on this EQ. I got dip, upside taking the trip. Got my little package to flip. No way, I'm going legit. Young boy said he won't get rich. Had to bring him in like a guest list. On the scales, weighing up a dish. On the phone, got him waiting for a flip. With the sauce I create, I can't fall off the way. Cool. So it's quite sibilant, it's quite in your face, a lot of high end going on there. We cut out a lot of that room. I don't know if I said before, but I wasn't, it wasn't the best recording, but it was okay. Of course, once we start boosting those high ends, we want to start DSing. So we are DSing at 7413. I got dip, upside taking the trip. Got my little package to flip. No way I'm going legit. Young boy said he won't get ripped. Cool. Then we've got the console one compressor, which I don't actually have plugged in here. So the actual plugin is not going to come up, but I, I'm pretty sure that's a four to one ratio. You can't actually tell without the, the, the hardware plugged in, but let's see what this is doing. I got dip, upside taking the trip. Got my little package to flip. No way I'm going legit. Young boy said he won't get rich. Had to bring him in like a guest list. On the scales weighing up a dish. On the phone got him waiting for a flip. So I like that. It really makes that vocal sound, you know, tight. I like that a lot. Um, close that. So kind of what I was going for was this compressor was kind of emulating compressing as you record because that's what Seth did when he recorded Future. So I was kind of trying to copy that idea with um, plugins, with software. Cool. So next up is the D D verb, and it looks like I'm using a preset here, the vocal plate. I got dip, upside taking the trip. Got my little package to flip. No way I'm going legit. Young boy said he won't get rich. Had to bring him in like a guest list. On the scales weighing up a dish. And... I like that. I like that a lot. The way that, um, firstly, I want to say I like how, because if you use a, a delay on the channel and then you put a compressor on afterwards, the compressor really brings out that delay. So I like the way that the, the delay is much more. So if I uh, mute it. I got dip, upside the trip. Like the, you can hear the delay a lot better now that that compressor is on. And then uh, this reverb, which is it's quite a small reverb. The decay is not crazy it's got a bit of pre-delay on there um i like it it's quite clean i got dip upside taking the trip got my little package to flip no way i'm going legit young boy said he won't get rich had to bring him in like a guest lit. cool um then we've got another ds here and we're, we're dsing quite low on this one and this this ds is acting more as a multi-band compressor really um because you know the the s is at three nine eight one aren't super super sibilant sounding they're more kind of it's more the harsh frequencies in um his voice that we're trying to smooth out with this particular dsr i got dip upside taking the trip got my little package to flip no way i'm going legit young boy said he won't get rich had to bring him in like a guest list on the scales weighing up a dish so yeah, don't be afraid to use multiple DSs. I use tons of them sometimes, um, especially if I don't record the vocal. And this is something that kind of keeps you on your toes. When you record, when you mix stuff that you record, you kind of know how your room sound, you know how your mic sound, and it's kind of easy just to start mixing. But when you get vocals in, it kind of keeps you on your toes because you have to use different techniques. You can't just use the same shit you've been doing over and over again. Not that you should do that anyway. Um, CLA 2A. I got dip, upside taking the trip. Got my little package to flip. No way I'm going legit. Young boy said he won't get rich. Had to bring him in. Not doing anything crazy. Um, so normally when I do a vocal, when I um when I'm mixing a vocal, I normally put at least two compressors on there anyway. So this compressor up here is acting like the compressor that is happening when it's being recorded. We're just pretending that we've recorded it with this compressor. Um, then we compressed with our second compressor that we would do normally in software. And then in this scenario, we're just doing a little bit more compression at the very end, just doing one or two, minus one or two decibels on that. 
Uh, another EQ. Apparently, I felt like I still wanted to do more reduction at this low end. Young boy said he won't get rich. Had to bring him in like a guest list. On the scales weighing up a dish. I think I was just trying to get rid of that box, a little bit of boxiness maybe, which was probably caused by the reverb more than anything. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I did. Uh, soothe, which kind of just smooths out the vocal a little bit. Any harsh frequency, you, any harsh frequencies that a vocal has, soothe is great for just smoothing that out. Um, Please don't tell me this is another compressor. Okay, cool. <laughs> I was worried there. I was like, Jesus, how much compressors do I need? A Another compressor, a um, couple of EQs here. I think I just wanted to boost a little bit at 4K. Maybe I felt like the DSs were kind of making the, the vocal sound a bit bland. Um, and then another cut at the low end. I clearly was just really um, bothered by that kind of those boxiness frequencies i don't remember exactly what my thought my thought process was but uh this is what i've got and then the trim was just to turn the the vocal up so cool and then we just got some a ping pong delay apparently which is this the repeater doing a ping pong delay I, got dip, upside, the trip. I think i may have um uh automated this so i don't think this is going all the way through the um the vote the the song it's just automating yeah, I don't know when that comes in, but apparently not then. And probably the same with this delay here. I got dip, upside taking the trip. Got my little package to flip. No way I'm going legit. Young boy said he won't get rich. Had to bring him in like a guest list. Uh cool. Um, a reverb. I got dip, upside taking the trip. Got my little package to flip. No way I'm going legit. Young boy said he won't get rich. Had to bring him in like a guest list. On the scales weighing up a dish. On the phone got him waiting for a flip. Cool. So that that that's my reverb here that I'm putting on at the end. Um, I got dip. That we're not putting on loads. It doesn't look like. Um, I don't actually remember this preset that I've created. Apparently, I, can't, I couldn't tell you <laughs> what it's doing. Yeah, it's got a fast attack and a bit of pre delay. Um, and a long decay, but I couldn't tell you kind of any other settings. I can't remember. I'm sorry. Um, and yeah, that is pretty much it. Obviously, we've got the ad libs here that have got a few effects on them as well. So let's mute the main vocal. So we got um, a compressor, uh, a little bit of distortion, saturation, um, cutting out the lows at 200 hertz on the EQ. Then we have a another compressor. And we're doing quite a lot of gain reduction on that compressor. That's why it sounds so squashed. Um, Waves tune, an EQ taking out some of the bottom end, so it's just a low cut and just a cut here at 200 hertz. An air flanger, which is why it sounds so kind of wobbly. And then another compressor doing minus six which is a lot to be fair so really squashing squashing that that um those ad libs and as you could see there i was automating the the ad libs to pan left and right that's a great way to make your mixes move and kind of make them sound a little bit more exciting 
So when headphone users are listening, they're hearing those ad libs just ping left and right. And also it keeps the ad libs out of the way of the main vocals. So they're not kind of getting in the way of each other. They're on different frequencies. They're just out of the way, basically, in their own space. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, it's a little bit different. I can't say I mix all of my tracks in this way. Um, you know, auto-tune rappers and singers. I can't say that I use this kind of sound, but I thought it was kind of interesting. I wanted to show you guys. And I'm quite pleased with how it sounds, to be fair. Even though there are, you know, a lot of weird things that I'm doing that I wouldn't normally do, like the delay on a channel. And I'm using a lot of plugins. I don't like to use that many plugins normally. Um, but I think, if I'm going to be honest with you, I think I was kind of stressing out over this mix. One, because his voice is quite difficult to mix. And two, because at the, at that point, and to be fair, even now, like when an artist who's relatively known and got some some got a name out there asks you for a mix, like you stress, like let's not get it twisted. You want to make a name for yourself. Like no matter how many mixes I do, I'm always going to want to show up on match day. Do you know what I'm saying? So I probably was stressing a little bit, started adding too many plugins unnecessarily. But hey, I'm honest. Do you know what I'm saying? But yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you found this interesting. I hope you found this helpful. Leave me a comment. Leave me a like. Subscribe. Ding that bell. I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> ding that shit. I don't know what the fuck it means, but ding the fuck out of it. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Peace. <laughs>